A U-shaped tube contains some liquid. The liquid column in each half of the tube has length L, as shown in the figure. So we can see that in each half, the length of the tube uh, liquid inside it is L. The liquid columns are displaced vertically. The liquid then oscillates in the tube. So the columns are displaced vertically. Now it oscillates. So it goes up, this one goes down, and then this one goes up, and this one goes down. So that's oscillation. And uh, the acceleration a of the liquid in the tube is related to the displacement x by this expression that you can see. So they have given us the acceleration equation for this system. Now, g is the acceleration of free fall, which is the acceleration due to gravity. Explain how the expression shows that the liquid in the tube is undergoing simple harmonic motion. So if you look at this expression, this one, the first thing that you notice is this negative sign, right? Now, what does that indicate? The negative sign indicates that the acceleration is opposite to the direction of displacement. So if the displacement is in this direction, then it accelerates downwards to go back to its original position and then goes even to the other extreme position where if for this liquid, if that this is oscillating upwards, this would be going downwards and so its uh, acceleration would be in the upwards direction. So this negative sign indicates that acceleration is in opposite direction of displacement. That's the first thing. The second thing is that if, if you look at this equation, g over l, g is a constant and so is l, the length of the tube, right? The length of the liquid is not changing. These are both constants. So we see that g and l are constants, which means that the entire term g over l will be a constant. And if it's a constant, then what's left is this displacement. And so we see that A is directly proportional to the negative of the displacement. And that's the definition of simple harmonic motion. That's how you define simple harmonic motion. And hence, that's the answer. Next, we have that the length of L of each liquid column is 18 centimeters. Determine the period of oscillations. All right. Now, we know that uh, the angular velocity, the acceleration due to gravity, and L is related. In fact, this term g over l is the angular velocity, uh, a square of uh, angular velocity, right? So this would mean that uh, we also know omega is 2 pi by t. So I can replace that over here and say g by l is equal to 4 pi squared by t squared. And this would give me a value for t is equal to square root 4 pi squared L over G. And now we know G is 9.81 meters per second squared. L is given as 18 centimeters, which would be 0.18 meters. And hence, if I put in those values in here, this would be 4 pi squared into 0.18 divided by 9.81. And then this would give you 0.85 seconds. The oscillations of a liquid in the tube are damped. In any one of complete cycle of the oscillations, the amplitude decreases by 6% of its value beginning of oscillation. So there is damping, right? Now, damping means that it's providing there's some, it could be due to some air friction, uh, and that friction is causing the amplitude to decrease. Now, we are required to determine the energy of oscillations after three cycles to, to the initial energy of oscillation. So this is the ratio that we want to figure out. Now, the first thing to remember is that the energy of the oscillations is proportional to the square of the maximum distance, right? Which means that the uh, ratio for energy of the oscillations after three cycles to the initial energy would be the amplitude squared after three cycles, which we want to figure out what would it be, right? So let me write it down as x naught squared after three cycles divided by x naught, right? The initial uh, amplitude. Now, this would be, so how would we figure out the amplitude after three cycles, right? Well, we would say that uh, it says that it decreases by 6% of its value. So if it's decreasing, then it should be 1, which is the maximum 100%, minus 6% is 0.06. And this would give me 0 
So it would decrease to 0 0.94 of the initial <coughs> displacement or the amplitude. So this is this and then this is this thing, which means that this would give you. But you have to remember that this is for one oscillation, right? So one minus 0 0.06 is for one oscillation because it, after one oscillation, he's saying in any one complete cycle, after one oscillation, its amplitude decreases by 6%. So if it decreases, for after one oscillation, it decreases by 6%, second oscillation, it will decrease by the product of 6% six into 6%, six person into six person, and in third time, it will be 6% into 6% into 6%, which means that there will be a cube on this thing, 0 0.94 cube times x naught square over uh, x naught square. And if you do the math, this gives you this ratio as 0 0.69, which is the correct answer.